Uh, today's topic is focusing on the United Nations Global Platform for Disaster Risk Reduction meetings, which were held in Bali, Indonesia uh, last month. And uh, what we want to do is to uh, review uh, some of what happened uh, for that uh, for that meeting, and then also uh, to share uh, information about the ongoing work that we are engaged with uh, with the center and with many of our partners that are um, with us today. We have a really uh, packed uh, list of uh, really all-star uh, players that have come together for this, that traveled together uh, to uh, Indonesia, um, but also uh, many who didn't travel that played a major important, who played a major a role in supporting and facilitating uh, the activities with the United Nations meeting. As you all know, this was the uh, seventh platform meeting and it was entitled From Risk to Resilience, Sustainable Development for All in a COVID-19 Transformed World. And so part of this was uh, a challenging because it was a big meeting, a big international meeting uh, at the tail end or uh, at, at the end of the, the COVID restrictions. And, uh, and so it was uh, quite um, challenging in terms of managing uh, the 4,000 or so participants in terms of the testing requirements, in terms of the vaccine and other types of rules as well too. And, and I guess one of the things that, one of the takeaways for us was that um, you know, Indonesia did a great job in terms of managing uh, this type of big international event. And, and in some ways, it's probably it probably was a practice session for the G20 meeting and other meetings that are uh, going to be held in, in, in Indonesia. Um, but today, what we want to do is really uh, talk about some of the highlights uh, from this uh, this meeting. Uh, there was a lot that was going on in addition to the formal UN platform for which we uh, participated in uh, several different ways. We also co-hosted uh, a scientific forum with the largest public university in Indonesia, Udayana uh, University, uh, in which we had um, many, many participants from, uh, per, uh, from across Indonesia and, and the region uh, participating in that uh, scientific forum. And then we also had many, many other meetings uh, with uh, our InvestDM team from uh, USAID and Mercy Corps and other partners. Uh, and so it was uh, really a, a packed uh, week in terms of the activities and the sharing of knowledge and information. But for today, what I uh, wanted to do was to hit um, some of the highlights. And I've asked many of our participants to give, you know, a two or three uh, minute um, overview of some of the, the big takeaways. Uh, and then uh, to, uh, and then hopefully we can have uh, some uh, discussion. I mean, I think there were some big important themes that I've uh, asked everyone to sort of reflect upon, um, but there were also uh, some other very detailed uh, lessons and ideas and takeaways that I think would be useful to share. I'd like to begin by uh, uh, introducing and thanking and acknowledging the support of uh, Nicole Boothman Shepherd, who is uh, who's the Vice President for um, Resilience and recovery at ACOM. ACOM was one of our big supporters and partners um, helping us to co-host many of the formal events. Uh, and I don't think we would, this would have been as successful without um, Nicole's uh, support. Um, Nicole, I, uh, I hate to push you on the spot like this, but I know you're, you've thought a lot about this and, and I really do appreciate your engagement and participation and support of this effort. And so 
Would you would you care to make a few um, overall comments and reactions to uh, the uh, uh, the event? And yeah, no, thank you, and that, thank you for your kind words, Carl. Um, you know everything you said uh, about the collaboration with us. Um, is reflective of the, the really extraordinary collaboration that we had with the University of Hawaii, but also with the entire InvestDM team and beyond, um, as well as the local universities, um, Udayana, of course, but also Papua and, and the University of Indonesia, um, so many uh, entities, the um, and really everyone on the phone really uh, contributed. And so um, I just wanna say that sort of, the lesson learned was probably um, kind of worrying too much about over-programming to a certain extent and not like letting the opportunities unfold and creating space for those collaborations to become a little bit more developed or ferment. So that would be one thing, but, you know, really just the richness of um, just seeing opportunity to collaborate. Um, getting a global perspective on where we are as an industry because it's very easy for us to get lost in our local area, in our region, uh, in our country, and not necessarily, and I think that isn't the case for many of you who do a phenomenal job working across the Pacific in particular, but also globally. Uh, but for me, um, I, I think it was very important to hear people's personal stories about uh, the challenges that they have with increased disaster severity and frequency and also the intersection with climate stresses and other stresses like poverty, like uh, a lack of infrastructure or, or a lack of uh, maintenance to infrastructure um, and, and a conflict, um, drought, food insecurity, water insecurity, and how all of those uh, areas really need to be front and center as we begin to think about working towards our, our climate goals and in doing so working on disaster risk reduction. So I just wanna uh, thank everyone and I want to um, just kind of encapsulate really quickly some of the things that, that, that we did together. And one of the things that we focused on as a team with many people on the call was um, supporting the innovation platform on remote island risk reduction. So uh, we were a little bit uh, in a situation of being the dog that caught the car because we applied together uh, with the University of Hawaii and the University of Papua to be a, an innovative partner or an innovation platform partner. And we didn't know what that meant. So we thought, well, maybe we'll have a workshop or we'll have a four hour symposium. And when we got the, the congratulations letter back from the UN for the GP um, platform, it said, congratulations, please be prepared to provide four days of programming from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, and by the way, you've been selected to do it in person and remote. And so everyone, uh, many, many, many people at the University of Hawaii and elsewhere came together and, and we were able to deliver 18 different sessions um, uh, that were focused on um, remote island risk reduction with a, a particular focus on governance, risk, communication, technology, and warning systems, um, and engagement to leave no one behind. We had some key sub-themes, nature-based solutions, which was top of mind for everyone, I think, there. Again, technology risk reduction and early warning. Um, governance, and that took the form of policy, of code and standards and specifications and a number of other activities. And then really thinking about moving from, you know, we've moved from a disaster victim model to a disaster survivorship. But when we're talking about support in remote island communities, the all residents need to uh, be invited in and supported into playing a role. So that was one of the things that we did. And then really just acknowledging the transdisciplinary nature of our work. Um, one of the things that, that was most gratifying to me um, was that, that it, it refreshed, you know, 
it was it was reinvigorating to me and it helped me see how much more work we can do through collaborative partnership. So if I had one big takeaway, it was look at how many more people have come together to enlarge our network, to have short, meaningful conversations, and already through the fulcrum of those discussions, how many ideas we have for where we need to go. So it was um, an important reflection period, not only for how far we've come, but how much more we need to do, uh, given you know the fact that we're facing what can be reasonably described as the greatest you know challenge uh, of uh, of it of at least uh, many generations in terms of climate action. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, thank you, Nicole, for really uh, giving a great overview. And I see so many uh, people who have joined us from around the world and. Uh, especially Indonesia, it's very early in the morning. And so it's, it's great to see our, our, our many friends and partners from Indonesia. Um, I mean, in addition to Nicole, if I was to single out a person who really made this thing happen, it would be Lily Boy, who was really uh, uh, the person who was in all places at all times and just really helped to manage all of the logistics of bringing all of this stuff and people and, and topics together. And so, Lily, I, I, I want to both thank you for your efforts, but also um, give you a chance to reflect on, you know, some of the big takeaways that, uh, that you have from, from this event. So, Lily? Yeah, thank you, everyone. And thank you for that summary, Nicole. Um, it's nice to revisit the energy that we all had collectively in Bali and bring a little bit of that back to our team here and our friends of NDPTC. Um, I wanna acknowledge that it was all a team effort. Um, I couldn't have done it without Charles. I couldn't have done it without the Udayana team and just everyone who played any part in this and Junoth too, helping with the scientific forum for disaster risk reduction. It really was a collective effort. And so I just wanna start with that statement. I cannot take full credit <laughs> at all for, for any of this. Um, the, the thing that I really want to highlight, um, since Nicole already talked about the innovation platform, is our scientific forum for disaster risk reduction. Um, so in so few words, we planned a conference in Bali alongside the already large conference and, you know, huge event of the global platform for disaster risk reduction. So this was very ambitious. Um, but the way that it came together was just, it, it really strengthened our relationships with the higher education partners we already have in Bali and the rest of Indonesia. So our main partner for the scientific forum was Universitas Udayana, and they're the largest university in Indonesia. Um, and so our programming for the day included keynote presentations um, from a lot of the people who are present on this call, and I hope that we'll hear from them. Um, one highlight I will say, you know, other than you, Brian, um, would be the Sultan of Tidore, who came and, and gave some really kind remarks about our initiative. Um, and so uh, it was very nice to, to, to meet him and to engage with a lot of the people who were part of the university system, um, which is essentially a pipeline for workforce development and disaster management within the country. So the bullet points are our conference uh, involved 32 presentations, all covering different topics that answered the questions, you know, one, what workforce development, education and training gaps exist in Indonesia and the Asia Pacific? And then two, how can climate change adaptation and disaster risk reduction governance be more equitable, especially for small island vulnerable communities? And then finally, how can technology be harnessed to better support the whole of community resilience? Um, so we covered a lot of ground. Um, we got, like I said, 32 presentations and about 170 people participated in this thing. So many were in person, but many of you also dialed in uh, or zoomed in on WebEx, or sorry, WebEx in. <laughs> um, and then we also were able to provide um, travel scholarships for 10 presentations that focused on workforce development. And that was with the assistance of Mercy Corps Indonesia. So it was extremely exciting to bring together so many people for the conference. And there were also service activities on the side of that conference. One of them was mangrove replanting. 
um, and learning about the restoration that needs to go into mangrove ecosystems and how complex of ecosystems they actually are in and of themselves as natural resources, but how they are mitigation strategies um, in attenuating wave action and preventing coastal erosion. And then secondly, we were also able to travel to Mount Agung, which is a volcano um, in a remote village in Bali. Um, and Carl was able to present a, um, a, a really great presentation on parallels between volcano hazard in Hawaii and in Indonesia. Um, and for those of you who are not as familiar with the Indonesian context, Indonesia, as Charles Ham will say, is the land of volcanoes. Um, and so it was wonderful to witness this island to island knowledge exchange, which is the whole purpose of this partnership and this mission. So the takeaway for me um, that I'll land on is that it really reinforced for us that all disasters are truly local events. Um, and it's really this capacity building that we are achieving or hoping to achieve through InvestEM, through these partnerships with higher education and through these very local participatory community oriented events that we get to be a part of and hope to continue to be invited to, um, that that's really where it all starts for resilience. Thank you, Lily, and thanks for uh, reminding us of all the team members uh, that participated in uh, the, the workshops and the preparations for this. You know, one of the, uh, the great things about this um, Bali trip is that it uh, enabled us to bring together many of our partners from um, other institutions. Um, you know, we were representing not just National Disaster Preparedness Training Center, but also the National Domestic Preparedness Consortium, uh, of which LSU and Texas A&M and New Mexico Tech and a number of other institutions are um, all part of. Uh, we were also really fortunate to have my good friend and colleague and collaborator uh, Professor Brian Wolshan, uh, really one of the foremost experts on evacuation, um, it, it, uh, join us. And, uh, and again, one of the big themes that I hope that Brian could talk about is the leave no one behind. Uh, I'm really glad Brian is currently on a sabbatical uh, and will be joining us uh, later this year. So those students and researchers that are keen on working on topics related to transportation, engineering, and evacuation. Brian will be back with us in, in the flesh uh, in August. So, so Brian, any uh, thoughts or takeaways that you want to share with us? Yeah, um, not to, and I, I apologize a little bit for my disheveled appearance. I'm, I'm getting up and I'm still working my way through a pot of coffee here. Um, Carl, as usual, um, and, and I don't want to overstate this because I know I'm I'm big on hyperbole, but I mean this feels like life changing for me for being a dumb guy from Detroit, like to to sit next to a sultan, you know, and to meet the people who I met. Over the top, awesome! What a great career experience. The best part for me, without a doubt, were the bus rides, sitting in the back, and hearing different perspectives and different people's opinions and different people's concerns was huge. I got more out of talking with everybody on the bus than and at the cocktail parties than anything else in a dinner. Um, like I had no idea who Chris was. I'm like Googling everybody constantly. I'm like, these are huge people, you know? Um, and it, it was awesome. So what I learned, and I, and I brought this up, Carl, as you know, when we're kind of going after these UTC things, um, is that I'm such in my stovepipe. Um, Nicole, I think you you put it really well. You're like, yes, you're in your lane and you stay in your lane and you don't want to want to get out of your lane or whatever, how you put it. But you're so right. That's like, that's my comfort zone. Like, I don't want to do any of these other things, but they're necessary and not only are they necessary, but they, they so overlap. So with that, Carl, one of the things um, that was like, what do we do next is my biggest question. So one of the coolest things, because they always start off, Carl, like a lot of stuff that I do with you, it's a complete head scratcher. I'm like, 
why am I here? What, what do we, like, what is this? Like, who are these people? I never know. And when we went to that, to that, um, I don't even know what it was. There was that, that village we went to, when we had that luncheon and there was a bunch of speakers, they were like the local emergency management guys. And it was funny because you talked about the work that we did in evacuation and you said, okay, this guy's, you know, this world's foremost expert, blah, 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 blah. And they're like, looking at me, like with questions, I'm like, man, you guys already do it better than us. You know, the way that you're communicating. Now, what I found out, the big takeaway from that day, Carl, was that, man, people do things so different, but it's so effective for what they, what they have and what they need and the best way for them to get it done. Um, it's just a different, what I learned was it's just a different form of what we're already doing. And, and I said to the guy, I got his card and I said, I got nothing for you. I mean, what you're doing is damn good. I would like to find a way to do some form of that, you know, in the countries or states or cities that I work. So anyway, blah, 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 Carl, what I just want to know is what do we do next? Like what I just don't want to do is, is, is have whatever you started, um, not go another step somehow, some way. So, um, that's about my summary of what I saw. Oh, and Charles, thank you, man. You are the best. Um, it's nice to see you without a mask. Um, man, anything like that was a problem. Lily, Charles, and you guys were on it. Every time you needed a car, you guys were you guys were anticipating my problems before I even knew that they were problems. And and thanks for all my leave behinds too. Um, between Charles and Van and Carl, all my wallet, raincoats. Well, <laughs> you're, you're coming. We'll, uh, uh, we'll get you your stuff that you left behind. And so, um, but again, it, it, it's it's great to actually reflect on your comment about what we can do next with this, how we can incorporate some of the lessons and local knowledge and experience into the work that we do. I think that this is really important. A big theme of what we were also focusing on um, you know, are the lessons from islands. And I'm so glad to see both Ginger and Tafa uh, joining us. And so I wanna hand it over to Ginger and Tafa because you really helped us connect with many of our Pacific Island uh, communities and colleagues that joined us as well too and so uh ginger tapa can you can you make some comments and, and reflections on on some of the takeaways ginger did you want to go first okay so um i covered on the disability aspects of the conversation within disaster and i thought it was such an amazing opportunity to share um what we're doing here in American Samoa in a broader space. And then I realized, wow, there's more to learn. Um, but, you know, when we were talking about takeaways, um, I, I like the conversation that we had. And I think we need to have more conversation around disaster and equity because there's a lot to be said about equity no matter what element you're in, in the disaster framework, right? Um, so that'll be great to see a little bit more. And I thought it was, Indonesia did a great job. I saw a lot of the integration of the conversation around um, disability there um, at the conference. So Ginger and I also attended the small island development states, the SIDS um, section, and um, that was, sponsored by the Republic of Fiji. And um, we did um, notice that there were a lot of conversation about training, the need to um, invest instead of expense. And um, I thought um, the takeaway after the um, science forum and the SIDS, I literally had deep conversation with Brian in the back of the bus. I was one of them that was in the back of the bus having this, um, instead of a hallway conversation, we had a back of the bus conversation. And um, I was thinking about um, how can we reform our curriculum and, and degree programs at the higher education level to um, infuse the concept of resilience because 
if we don't start changing, pushing out a new generation of workforce that speaks and understands the concept and can plan around resilience, we're going to keep in, we're going to keep investing in um, recovery efforts and we're not going to build resilience. So I think, you know, Carl said um, a great concept, you know, about how can we use higher ed more? And I think that's where we, as we go back into our workplace, how can we have a conversation around the curriculum area and say, now, how can we infuse and have this conversation around resilience? Van Romero said something very important at University of Udayana was that in small island nations, you have no one to rely on but yourself because what's on island, that's the resources you're left with. So if people are your resources that can build the resilience, I think this is the time and the effort to start having this conversation within our institution and the curriculum and instruction area. Thank you. I'll turn the time over to Ginger. Yeah, thank you, Tafa. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, so we had a, I'm currently here in New Orleans and on a, um, you know, very, very, relative topic and and this is on uh, broadband workforce innovation and digital equity which ties right back to you know what what a lot of the lessons and a lot of the presentations that we talked about in Indonesia and so we talked about collaborative workforce education and training and I tell you the examples right the projects that were presented at the community level, they were across the board, but these are really the grassroots stuff. How, how do we train people? How do we work together to build a workforce that, that supports and actually uses technology, it uses data, uses this, this whole digital world that we're, we're moving into? How do we design for that? How do we train people um, from different sectors uh, to support this whole movement into to digital world, right? And then, and then into, and, and considering all the, the equity components that come with it. Um, you know, one of the, the, the other things that, that we, a big takeaway for me in the conversation in um, Indonesia is then all the, the early warning systems, right? How do we support that all the way to then get, getting the message to, that last person to our rural communities, which comes right back to also this conversation that I'm here in New Orleans, and they're talking about the same thing. We're implementing all this massive infrastructure in small island communities, in rural communities, but how do how are we going to use it effectively? How are we going to get the the training and and the the workforce to support it? And it came down to collaborative workforce education and training and the role of the academic institutions. So, you know, I'm involved in all these conversations and in the end, it's it comes right back to this theme about collaborative learning, collaborative partnerships, um, intentional planning. So, um, yeah, so I'm all over the place having so many ideas. So thank you for the opportunity. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you for your uh, comments and your insights and kind of connecting technology to workforce development and training and education, which kind of leads us next to um, our next um, speaker that I wanted to invite, uh, Chris Chiesa from Pacific Disaster Center. I mean, the Pacific Disaster Center has had so much of a, an influence in terms of developing technologies and sharing the technologies and building capacity around uh, different types of uh, technologies. And so, Chris, I don't know if you want to... Oh, also, uh, the PDC was recognized with, a, with, with an award at, at that time. Do you, yes. you want to say a little bit uh, yeah, about I, that? Yeah, I, I will. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I feel like... <clears throat> I feel like I want to say 10 things at once, which is how <laughs> I felt. That I think the whole week in Bali, really, or even, even preceding it. I started off in Manila, actually, with with the uh, Office of Civil Defense, their FEMA equivalent, and USAID was there. And we were 
uh, showcasing or really civil Office of Civil Defense was showcasing the work that we had done the previous year to USAID and under USAID funding and really telling their own story about how this technology was put to use um, almost immediately after delivery with, with uh, two big storms, uh, one that resulted in a lot of flooding and one that resulted in a lot of landslide and just how they were able to, they were <clears throat> extremely innovative in the way they use the tools, uh, even outside of the training, I think, or outside of our scenarios and just demonstrates how getting different perspectives, getting these partnerships, collaborations, as Ginger mentioned, is so important. Um, and the other piece that I was, you know, going to mention is, you know, Ginger, a lot of times people talk about the last mile, but what I, I heard an interesting presentation where they said, you know, we should be last mile, meaning getting that signal down to the, to the, to the communities and, and um, um, villages and so forth that really need to, to know what's going on. We should, we should call that the first mile, right? Because it's the mm -hmm. most important. If you don't get it there, it doesn't really matter. So maybe maybe changing the, the language and the messaging will help, uh, help reinforce that. In any event, yes, um, I, I want to you know, thank the whole um, NDPTC team and, and Lily. Um, if there's a NDPTC uh, recognition award. I'm gonna, you know, if you're not nominated, I'm nominating you. <laughs> and, if, and if you need it, second it, I'll second it, and I'll and I'll vote for you. But yeah, you, I, I was afraid I was gonna get on your spam list with how many times I was asking you something. But you, you, you really made this this trip um, go well. And Carl, thank you for extending the opportunity. And Charles, Brian, Van, um, uh, you know. Nice to meet you and, and, and see you again, and, and and all of those that I you know forgot, and the, Nicole, all, all those that I forgot in the process. Um, <clears throat> it was a busy week, uh, capped really by, and, and and I'm glad that several of my PDC colleagues have, have joined, but really capped by our the recognition of the work that the center's done over the last 25 plus years, and that's through the you know receipt of the uh, Sasagawa Award, the the first first award uh, organizationally and and it really um, felt like a I, I don't know if capstone is the right word but a, you know a lot of hard work over 25 years building these relationships building tools and and analytics and data sets that, that we see making a difference um, and and to be recognized for that is is fantastic I'd like to thank my all of my colleagues at PDC, but I know those on the on the line, uh, Chani, Joel, Annie. I don't think I saw Fodley, and I know Aaron's on on vacation, well deserved vacation this week. So, so thanks a lot. Um, but I thought the um, science um, forum w w was really good, and I regret having that I had to leave. I had some commitment um, right, you know, in the middle of that afternoon, um, and. I was kind of wondering, I think somebody made, you know, I guess Brian said, you know, what the heck is Carl doing? Um, and I was thinking a conference and a conference. Hmm. Okay. But I, I could really see where that was a, a great engagement. And I, and I hope in the what's next, Carl, that we're able to fold some of that energy and those, you know, those, the, the researchers and faculty and, and students in, into that work. Um, I made a presentation on, I'm really like, uh, I forget the exact title, but, but operationalizing science and technology innovations. And that's in a nutshell what PDC does. And I hope that we have opportunity to operationalize. And by operationalize, I mean put into regular practice, put into uh, dependable, co continuous operating services that people can rely on and use to make day in and day out decisions from all of the fantastic science and technology that gets done. So I hope we have an opportunity to do that. I, um, and I, I hope that's really on the, on the what's next. Um, I think with that, I'll just, you know, pass back the, the microphone. I've probably used my time. I will say, Brian, as a fellow Michigander, go blue. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Th yeah. Thanks, thanks, Chris, uh, for your comments and also for your participation and support of you know so many of our different initiatives and 
uh, it's, uh, and I think we have both very specific research projects that are coming out of the Udayana meeting, mm -hmm. as well as sort of broad directions that we've identified for further collaboration and work. And so I think a lot of this is still germinating and in, in, yeah. uh, in, informing, but uh, I think there's so many things that we share in common uh, with Bali and Hawaii, with Indonesia and the U.S. And, and so I'm, I'm hopeful that we can continue to uh, build on both uh, the technology and capacity building, but also some of the other issues that we've been trying to uh, address. You know, as I look even on this call, that we've got people from all over that are, who, who are joining us. I wanted to invite Charles, Charles Ham. Uh, who's coming to us from? Are you are you in Jakarta right now, Charles? Yes. Good morning. Yeah. From Jakarta. Right. And uh, thank you, Carl, for inviting me to share a little bit. But I think it was it was a wonderful event, and uh, everybody talked about uh, collaboration and conference within conference. But I think also I I just want to stress the the fact that it was the inclusivity and how. Uh, the, 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 the scientific forum provide an opportunity for people to come together. It was, it was a little strange. Uh, it was a little mind boggling, I guess, when I talked to Udayana that, you know, uh, there was a conference coming and pretty much nobody knew what conference is this. And it's the GPDRR that the UN hosted every two years and, the fact that when we were hosting it, the Indonesian government, BNPB, and, and the Indonesian Disaster Expert uh, Association uh, didn't have any plan to include the academicians in university. So our forum was the forum, the event for the universities and the academicians. And I, I just think it was, it was very timely to have that forum, to have that opportunity in, in Bali. And it was included as the Resilience House activity uh, by the Indonesian government. But most importantly, uh, as we have our colleagues uh, on this call as well, Dr. Henry, Dr. Elizabeth, Dr. Krishna, everybody took part uh, in, in participating. And uh, this is this is my background. Is the island where the Sultan of Tidore is from? So Brian needs to mm. go there still, one day, uh, and Nicole and Chris and everybody else. But uh, to see the opportunity for academicians from remote places from these islands to come together, uh, and actually it was 13, 13 countries that came together from. Uh, 36 universities that we counted. Uh, it was wonderful. Uh, and I, I, I appreciate even after, after the presentations, we had, we had a small gathering uh, the next day, uh, kind of talking about how do we take it forward. But then we have the BPBD, the local provincial uh, disaster emergency, uh, emergency management agency, come in and say, we really want to meet. We really want to meet. So, you know, some even join us in the morning and wanting us to, to collaborate more, to do more research, to do more practical solutions for places like Ternate, places like Sofifi, where they're doing development. And they, they came to where our breakfast was gathering and, and really wanted to, to everybody to support and take part. So I think as the world talk about social justice, equity, uh, the forum was, was timely in, in op providing a platform from academicians to include them, to include everybody. And we look forward, some of the papers, uh, we're trying to gather them and try to help them so they can be published internationally. Uh, and, and that would be a great step for many of the academicians. Thank you so much. Looking forward to see everybody else one day together again. Yeah, it was really great, uh, Charles, and thank you for your help in connecting us with uh, many of the uh, universities and researchers throughout uh, Indonesia. 
uh, I can see many also on this call as, as well too. Uh, I, I see um, Professor Hendry uh, as well too. Um, I don't know, Hendry, if you wanna say a little bit about the uh, Raja Ampat uh, conference. I know that the dates haven't been necessarily set as yet, but certainly, um, uh, Hendry, do you wanna say a little uh, uh, about that event? Yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you, uh, Carl, and then also Nicole, Charles, and Lilia, and the others for the support uh, scientific forum in Bali. So for the purpose, uh, just so we know, uh, we want you also to bring uh, the all expertise, especially for the remote island. And then uh, in your notes, uh, uh, we in the West Papua, a lot of uh, West uh, small island. So almost uh, 4,110. So otherwise we struggle with the climate change and disaster. And then uh, we calling for the uh, need uh, technology, something like the research, education, collaboration for the all partner. So otherwise uh, our University of Papua want to make some uh, international conference yeah, to share the knowledge for the all expertise uh, in the November 24th. I think uh, I just welcome you all can join in the that seminar. Okay, thank you. Carl. Yeah, yeah, so more details to, to follow on that. But again, it's we've had a long, long relationship with uh, Hendry and his university and we've hosted um, uh, visitors from uh, West Papua, and we visited there. And again, we're hopeful that we can kind of continue this, uh, this strong uh, partnership. And so we've started a number of specific research projects. Um, one of them that we did launch at the Udayana conference relates to the issue and challenges of misinformation or disinformation or false news. And, and uh, so, or fake news. Um, and so we did uh, launch a project. Uh, I don't know, Junath, if you can say a little bit about um, the survey and what the, some of the initial results that we've uh, collected so far and in our efforts to sort of push it out further, Junath. Uh, thank you, Carl. Uh, it is such a privilege to be part of the uh, team for this forum. And I was in the back end helping with the abstract and, and registration and, uh, and organizing the schedule with Lily, Charles, and many, many others from the University of Udiana. Thank you for the opportunity. And I got a lot of insights and a lot of uh, diversity in the perspective on that. So. As, as Professor Kim mentioned, we, uh, as a part of this forum, we started uh, this misinformation survey uh, study uh, that we launched there. And many, many of you already uh, participated in that, uh, but I'm posting the link here again. So part of this is like how, how misinformation impacts to the disaster management and what are the case studies? We are really interested in the local cases, local experiences, how, how it has been impacting uh, in your kind of like uh, professional, personal, as well as in, in, in your work. So please take the survey uh, and, and spread the word in your network. We really want to hear uh, across the, uh, from, from Indonesia and other parts of, parts of the world. Uh, and as of now, we have uh, 134 responses uh, representing uh, mainly United States, Indonesia, and some other countries. Uh, from Indonesia, around 28% are from Indonesia, but we want to hear more given the uh, extent of the country and, and, and extent of disasters communities are facing there. We really want to hear more uh, from local level uh, and, and uh, from the cities, uh, rural areas, emergency management communities from there. And also from other parts in Pacific, uh, especially Tafa and uh, Ginger, if you guys can help us to push out in the Pacific, we want to hear from small uh, island communities. We want to include their voice in this, in this um, survey. So we will keep gathering the data until uh, uh, July, uh, 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 beginning of July, or we can extend a little bit of, of, of more than that, but please uh, help us to reach out to, uh, to, the, to, the, to the practitioners uh, at the local level 
uh, who are handling different emergency situations. Uh, uh, that is what I, I have regarding this research. Thank you, Carl. Yeah, thank you, Junath. And, and many of you know that uh, Junath is really extending our network because he will be leaving us at the University of Hawaii and taking a faculty position uh, at the University of Iowa. Uh, so I want to first congratulate uh, Junath on uh, getting this uh, new position, but also thank him for his many, many years of work and research with us and hope that the collaboration will uh, continue as our network spreads um, further east. Uh, uh, but thank you again, uh, Junath. Um, yeah, there were many others uh, that uh, participated um, virtually as well, too. Uh, one of our graduate students who's, uh, who, who's uh, joined us uh, also participated uh, virtually uh, from this. Uh, Dave, uh, I was going to open it up to you because I know that you attended some of the sessions uh, online, whether you, you had any reactions or comments that you wanted to share with us. Yeah, actually, um, one thing that really piqued my interest was the um, the speech by, I think it was Dr. Romero from New Mexico Tech, where he talked about uh, the consideration of natural disasters that come from interstellar, that have interstellar origins, and how we are learning to make those things perhaps tractable in trying to avoid them or trying to mitigate them. And I mean, that's really incredible to me that we are tackling potential hazards on that level. But it also gives me a great deal of confidence that we can deal with the terrestrial ones as well, because if we're able to do things at interstellar scale, then certainly we can, we can make our hazards more um, tractable here on Earth. I, I think that was, and I don't know if Dr. Romero is here today, but um, just the scope of his work um, would be really impressive. I, I don't see him, but he actually also raised a really provocative question because if our technology and our forecasting abilities, especially for asteroids and meteors and other, are so good that we can predict the timing and the location and potentially the impacts, you know, in advance of a, of a disaster, would we really leave no one behind? would we really be able to uh, mitigate and address these sorts of uh, uh, challenges and, and problems? And could the world sort of come together uh, to address these types of problems um, if we know that uh, with, with foresight, with technology and so forth? Uh, there's a lot of work that we are trying to do uh, in collaboration uh, on space science um, and integrating uh, satellite and other uh, technologies. Uh, we've been doing a lot of work with the 360 uh, cameras, the, the Google Street View integration, other types of technologies as well too. And hopefully we can use these in a way to support uh, disaster risk reduction and improve safety and resilience. Uh, um, you know, the other thing that I wanted to emphasize, one of the other big takeaways uh, for me um, from the Bali meetings is, is really the need to invest in green nature-based uh, solutions. Uh, I think I was reminded of that because of the physical beauty of the environment, but also many of the challenges associated. It's so much easier to pour concrete or to build uh, a structure rather than to harness you know, the power of nature or to restore uh, nature. And, and so I think for us, one of the big gaps, one of the missing pieces, not just in terms of uh, reporting back in terms of building back better uh, in uh, globally as part of the, the, the UN uh, platform. But I think also uh, in the US as well too, as we look at um, the infrastructure, the jobs bills and, and so forth. So uh, I don't know if there are any other comments, anyone else, I don't wanna put anyone on the spot, uh, but uh, are there any comments? Can we, uh, uh, open it up for broader discussion, perhaps from uh, others in, in this. I see lots of uh, people who I know 
are not shy. Uh, I, I, I see Jim Spencer from uh, uh, LSU, a longtime uh, colleague and collabor collaborator. Uh, Jim, I don't know if you had any uh, reactions. I was trying to get you to come too to the meetings, but I know that you were that that, that you can make it. But any any reactions to our discussion or uh, what you, what you've been hearing? Well, uh, yeah. So so first off, yes, we talked and and uh, much as I would like to go, on, I'm actually going in late August to Bali right. for the GPAN meeting to be yep. on a Lincoln Institute panel on land valuation. But sorry. Um, on land valuation. And, you, you know, I really wish I had been able to come to this trip as well. One, to kind of see old friends, because I see, you know, a lot of old student friends and others, but, but also to kind of get some of the things that I think are super important in, in these conversations about reconstruction, and especially with land-based, you know, phenomena like disasters, the, the issue that comes up almost immediately is, okay, we want to reconstruct, we want to help, we want to assist individuals and families, what is the what is the value of the land, right? What was the land value that we're replacing, right? So we see this with FEMA, you know, sort of, um, you, you know, insurance, you know, you have to, at some point, you have to sort of say, well, how much is it that we are actually replacing and what's the cost of that? And that's just as a, as a quick note, that's what we're starting a, a panel with Lincoln Institute on this related to land, not specifically related to disasters, but to me, again, it's something that I think dovetails nicely with all the work that you've been doing for years, Carl, about how do you get planning and the kinds of skill sets that planners bring with them um, to, to really assist in the reconstruction of after disasters and the mitigation of them as well. But all those things have to do with the policy side and financing of whether it's a green infrastructure or a gray infrastructure or some other kind of infrastructure. Um, there's a certain collective cost that's got to be borne by somebody. And I think that's one of those things. I'd love to be part of that and sort of figure out how we can work together on this because, because I think it's something that's, um, uh, in, it, one, it's very important. And two, if we can get developed models for this, there's a huge industry in the insurance industry that's grappling with this stuff anyway, but they're grappling at it not necessarily with an equity lens, not necessarily with a sustainability lens, not necessarily with a, you know, sort of a, an integrated development lens, they're looking at it with a lens of, of, you know, I hate to say it, kind of profit margins and this kind of thing. So, um, so I think that there's a huge elephant to kind of m motivate if we can get some of these kinds of questions um, formatted in the right way. Yeah, I think it's so timely. I think it's needed. And I think it could be potentially transformative. And so uh, those are the elements that I, that I find really interesting to think about. And, and for us, we oftentimes try to start with the roads and transportation networks and systems and physical infrastructure, how we can uh, to, to transform those, those, those sorts of systems as well too. But I, I think the land base and thinking about the connection, the broader uh, environmental uh, considerations are, is so important. Um, I don't know, are there other comments or thoughts? Anybody want to jump in and, and react to uh, uh, so much of, uh, of uh, what, we've, what we've covered so far already? I know it's like all things all at once and a little bit chaotic, but you know, that's, that's kind of the nature of things too, right? Uh, anything that, that uh, we left off? Uh, Nicole, you want to say something? Uh I'm never at a loss for words. So uh, <laughs> I, you know, I, I think it's interesting. I think I'd like to know, you know, Carl, you had talked about us essentially maybe coming together to issue a white paper or figuring out how to promulgate and memorialize the collective learnings and next steps. Also, you know, the UN did come out with a platform statement from Bali and just, you know, how you see us interacting uh, with that and then just solicit the ideas of everyone on the phone about um, how they want to come together under these meta themes for the global PAT platform and also kind of figure out what those strands are to continue to collaborate. Yeah, you know, it's so much like the actual event. There's the formal processes, the formal things, and, you know, I've reviewed those, and I think there are channels and conduits for us to provide input uh, from the U.S., for example, uh, on this, uh, or we can do it as institutions responding to the formal track. And the whole reason that we created the Udayana uh, event, uh, the, the scientific forum, 
was to really broaden the participation because part of this is ensuring that there really is buy-in, not just in terms of the formal processes, but it's actually built into the education, the training, the research, the engagement in, uh, in, in communities. So I don't know as yet what form that will take. I mean, we are, we are trying to triangulate between uh, these different uh, pieces and elements. Um, but again, uh, I, I, I do like that idea of trying to think about how we can relate this to not just the global platform and their uh, requirements for monitoring progress in Sendai, but uh, also how does that really affect our own countries, our own states or provinces, um, our own regions of the, of the world. And so, um, but anyway, uh, we will work together uh, around that. Any other thoughts or takeaways in terms of uh, needed actions or uh, next steps? I see Made Bruner uh, as well too, one of our former, uh, he, he was with us at the University of Hawaii and he participated in, uh, in the scientific forum. Made, did you have any takeaways? Uh, and, and actually uh, deep connections to uh, Bali as well too. And so Made, I, I don't know if you had any thoughts or reflections on uh, what you heard today or at the, uh, at the scientific forum. Thanks Carl for the opportunity. Yeah, it was great that uh, to see so many friends there. I had an opportunity also to back to Bali after the, what the COVID because it was hustle to go from from Jakarta to Bali as well, and then also to meet the Sultan as Brian said that it was a great opportunity to have uh, have a dinner together there. Uh, Nonetheless, the I, I what 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 is next after this is I think it's more important too. So we can continue to have the what the the wheel rotated, yeah, rather than stop right after the what the meeting. So I think the perspective of US and then also islanders and then also from elsewhere is a great things because probably. It's great in one place. It's not applicable in other places. It could be a, a what things to see, and then yeah, uh, because every uh, what everywhere uh, different places has a different uh, culture and also uh, things to learn. Yeah, that's I think uh, one thing that we, we we need to see. Thanks, Carl, for that one. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and it was great to hear about your research on energy and fuel and uh, other uh, other topics that I think are that, that that's so important. Um, I know we're kind of coming running out of time now, and I, I want to bring this uh, uh, event to a close. I do want to remind you that at the end of July, a large delegation from BNBP, from Pustaklat and Pustalops and uh, also from Mercy Corps Indonesia, will be traveling to Honolulu uh, for, for two days of meetings. I guess that would be on Monday the 25th and 26th. And so we will try to bring together as many of the participants in Honolulu for that before we travel on to uh, Oregon and o Oregon State University and Portland and the Mercy Corps headquarters in uh, Portland. And then on to EMI and uh, uh, FEMA headquarters in Washington, D.C., and then to CDP in uh, Anniston, Alabama. And so this is all part of this ongoing uh, knowledge exchange that, that you'll hear more about. And I hope that you can be engaged uh, with us in that. We would like to take our um, visitors from Indonesia to Haima and uh, also to meet with uh, the emergency managers in Hawaii, um, not just from FEMA and NOAA and uh, US Army Corps of Engineers and Pacific Disaster Center and other partners, but with others as well too. And so more to come um, on that as well too. But uh, with that, what I would like to do is to bring this session to a close. 
thank you all uh, for uh, joining us today, for participating in this uh, session. Let's continue to interact and uh, share information and then work together collaboratively because I think the challenges, if, if, if anything, um, while we were there to report on progress, I personally feel that there's still so much more work that needs to be done and uh, we have uh, a, a lot to do together. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, we'll, we'll keep the room uh, open for a little bit longer just for some informal discussion, but I know that many of you may have other obligations and uh, commitments. So thank you all for uh, joining us again.